Welcome to Excel and Finance video number 12. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link directly below the video and you can download this workbook, Business 233, Chapter 2. Hey, two more topics we're going to talk about in this Chapter 2. Why debt is good, also why it's bad, and then we got to just briefly look at taxes. Now, why is debt good? Well, debt is good because it saves cash. What? Wait a second, if I'm borrowing money and paying interest, how does it save cash? Well, on the income statement, debt expense is a reduction from your income, which means any reduction from income means you pay fewer taxes. So there's a tax advantage. It actually saves you some cash. Um, and why, debt, why is debt bad? Because, simp well, do I even have to answer this in the year 2010? All the humans on the planet saw what happened between 2007 and 10. Too much debt can get you in big trouble. Too much debt, you may go bankrupt. Now let's see an, an example here. If you use new debt to buy an asset, 500 bucks, we could, so we're, we're, we're talking about debt, so we use debt. We go out and borrow the money, 500 bucks, and we buy an asset. But what's the other possibility? We could have used equity. So ultimately we're going to see one little income statement and we're going to see what net income was when we used debt to buy that $500 asset and then we're going to see, oh that shouldn't say, let's just say with, um, without. So income statement without debt um, or um, set a different way um, you used equity, right? All right, so here it is. We buy 500. The annual interest rate on the contract says 8%, and our tax rate is 30%. Let's first calculate interest on debt. It's simply, um, and I'm going to use our round function, just like we did uh, last video. Round, round what? Well, we need to take our uh, debt we owe times our interest rate, and this uh, is just a flat rate for the whole year of 8%. Now this is actually, we may have to pay some pennies uh, to a banker, so when I type a comma, the number of digits, last video we saw zero for the, for the to the dollar, like for income taxes, which we will again have to do down here, but right now we're, we're talking pennies, so you have to put a two here to say, hey, round to that second uh, digit to the right of the decimal. 40 bucks. Actually, it didn't, uh, 40, we got no pennies there, so it didn't matter. But in general, that's smart to use the round function. All right, so cash, this is cash going back to the bank. We pay our interest, 40 bucks. But wait a second, we're going to indirectly have cash coming in from our savings on our tax bill. All right, now think about this. 40 bucks, we subtract it on our tax bill. Bill. So any subtraction means forty dollars is subtracted. That means we avoided paying thirty percent on forty bucks. So to, so to figure out the tax uh, advantage for forty bucks at a rate of thirty, we simply go, hey, equals this times our thirty uh, percent, and that says to us our. Uh, cash savings. Now I'm going to put a round around here even though I'm always uh, careful about this because you never know when the input will change, right? I have a rounded to the penny. If all of a sudden this was 8, uh, 8.75, then we would have had to, uh, we're, well, we're happy that we rounded. I'm going to control Z. So if $40 went out, 12 um, the avoidance of $12 is what this really is, but get this, if we didn't use debt and instead we used equity, when we paid out the dividends, there would be no tax benefit. We avoided paying $12 out as cash, which is the same as getting cash in, right? So if you go to the store and they say um, you have a $10 bill and you're about to buy the thing for $10 and they go, Oh, we're going to give you a $2 discount. What do they do? They give you back $2. You expected to pay 10, but they gave you a, a discount. That's like cash coming in. Anytime you can avoid having your cash go out, it's like you saved cash. So the difference equals that minus this. Okay, that's one way to analyze it and think about it. And that's 
good. You should be able to do that. But here's an even more um, maybe straightforward way, right? Income, net sales 1,000, expenses total are 400. So our net earnings before interest and taxes 600. And we have interest expense of 40. Notice over here, same income statement, but no um, interest expense. So what do we do? We say equals EBIT minus our uh, interest, and that will give us our taxable earnings. Equals round. And I'm going to say taxable earnings times our tax rate, comma. And we're going to the dollar or the integer, so we put a zero. 68 bucks. No problem. We do our calculation just like we did the last couple of videos. Taxable earnings minus our tax. There's our net income. But come over here and let's do it. Tax. You can already see the difference. We subtracted it to get to our tax point. No subtraction here. That's a fat 600. So I say equals round. Oh, no. That uh, 600 times our 30%, comma, 0. Close parentheses and 180 bucks. So the tax is higher. Notice there's the difference of 12. Notice cash going out of 180 if we didn't use debt, cash of 168 because we used debt. So that savings shows up. Equals this minus this. Now, wait a second, 420, 392. You mean net income is greater when we don't use the uh, debt and the interest expense? Yeah, of course. That interest is allowed on the income statement as an operating expense. The parallel, if we used equity, dividends are not. They show up somewhere else. So for us, the financial manager, we're not interested in that net income. We're interested in the cash flow. And there's a huge advantage when we use debt. Now, um, so you could see the difference there. Um, and But the, the relevant calculation is understanding uh, that when you can take a uh, interest rate, calculate your interest, put it on the income statement, subtract it, and avoid paying taxes. So that's why debt is considered good. Now let's go on one other topic concerned with taxes. <coughs> There's something called average tax rate and marginal tax rate for the next dollar. Now, tax tables are different for whether you're individual or a corporation. This is uh, a table I got. Uh, maybe it's a year or a couple years old. But nevertheless, you get the idea. No way. 15% for the first 50,000. Then between 501 and 75, in essence, 25,000. Yeah, the next 25,000, you have to pay 25%. The next 25,000, because 100K minus 75 is 25. The next 25,000, 34. And then between 335 and 100,000, 339. And then you can see how it goes down here. So when you have 300,000 like we have here, you have to calculate it in a bunch of steps. All right, so the first one. Um, I'm just going to go equals the, th no, I can't do the 300,000. It's the first bit there. So that times this. Now the next bit, um, we still haven't exceeded uh, this amount here. So I'm going to have to take the difference in the tax table. So in parentheses, this minus this times whatever this rate is. Still, we're not anywhere near the hurdle. We've only gone from uh, 50,000 uh, up to uh, 75,000. So the next one, we have to do the same thing here in parentheses. 100K, the next 25,000 in essence, right? Times this tax rate. And finally, now we're approaching uh, the ceiling here. This 335 is greater than our amount. So the next amount is going to be through this amount here minus all of the taxes. So we've had taxes on 100K so far. So we have to say equals our amount minus all of the taxes, that 100K that we've already uh, so far been taxed on. 
times this one right here, because we're this bracket right here all the way down to there. So 39%. That's how you calculate uh, taxes. Now, in, in this chapter, um, they're just alerting you to this this fact of how to calculate taxes. They're um, we're pretty much not going to have to calculate taxes like this. Um, but we do need to know the difference between average and marginal. So let's figure out our total tax bill. Alt equals, it, it's got the right range, so I hit enter. Wow, 100,250. So average tax rate, this is the amount that went out cash-wise, and this is our taxable income. So you just compare the two. This is the part, this is part of the whole, part of the total. So to calculate a percentage, you say the part divided by the total. So our average tax rate is 0.33417. But in financial analysis, y you may have a whole range of um, uh, income numbers. But if you're thinking about buying a new machine, you have to analyze not all of these, but if you add a new machine and it brings, so you have, you're at 300,000, right? And if the machine's going to bring in an extra 100,000, that's on top of this. Well, this is all the taxes for that. So the marginal rate is what if you brought in 100K, right? I'm sorry. If you brought in 100K of, of income, where would it fall within this bracket? Well, it would fall right here. It's 39. So it's actually a, uh, probably not 39. It's 100K. 35,000 of it would be 39. And uh, the remaining. 65,000 would be at 34. So you would actually have to calculate. But in essence, you always ask the question, what's the marginal rate for the next dollar? And for us, it's going to be 39. So that's the marginal rate. Why is this important? Um, because uh, if you're analyzing the cash flows from a particular asset, um, you always got to think of, if we add some more dollars, where are we going to be taxed? Now, later in, in later chapters, I think 10 or 11 or something like that, they'll just give us the marginal tax rate. They'll say, here's your project you're analyzing, and here's the marginal tax rate. But that's how you do it. You'd have to actually you know, do your calculations, figure out where you were, and find the marginal tax rate. All right, um, that's it uh, for this chapter 2. Chapter 3 is going to be an extension of Chapter 2. Remember, we were analyzing, looking at financial statements, learning a little bit about them, learning how to look at cash flows. And next chapter, Chapter 3, will analyze financial statements with ratio analysis and a few other analysis tricks. All right, we'll see you next chapter and next video.